Welcome to the Jamoti Podcast. We are all surrounded by amazing coaches and leaders. So let's get an inside look at not just what they do, but how they do what they do. After all, becoming the best versions of ourselves is Jamoti, just a matter of doing it. One thing that um, I, I've always loved about listening to you and when I've been able to watch your teams play, the fearlessness, the relentlessness, but also the way you shoot. And so when you see a team shoot with that much, but it just looks like they're all confident and it, it stems from the way that they train and the way that they're being coached. So how do you teach shooting confidence with your teams? Um, so I think you said higher standards um, constantly. Um, you're you're going to reach your expectations. And I think we allow ourselves to um, just be happy with a shot going in um, instead of a splash or a swish. Um, if it hits the rim, then we give more points. Like we give an extra point in the preseason if it's a complete splash. Hmm. Um, we want to be – most of our shots need to be guarded, uh, at least a hand trying to be guarded. Uh, I'm not a big fan of just too much. I mean, I'm nothing wrong with, with, with just sitting there shooting, form shooting. Uh, but like – you know, like if you're sitting, get, working on getting your shot off quick, I'd still, even if you have the shoot away, have a person stick a hand up. That net is not realistic. Yeah. So uh, if you're a good shooter, you're going to be challenged. You're going to have people in your grill and you're going to have to get your shot off quick. But so I think uh, if we're doing certain things, we celebrate, we celebrate excellence. Um, we set higher standards. If, if 10 is the drill, we're going for 12. And, and if we don't get 12, we're going to, we're going, we're going to try three times and do a few things that makes you not, you know, sit on the wall for a second, make you think about why, why are you not focusing? You can get this, you know, you got this. Um, we always say 14 wins a championship, 10 gets you out of the drill. Which one do you want? Mm. And 14, we had to win four. And, and when we won it in, in, in 09, we had to win hit 14 threes twice to beat a team the last two games. And you're sitting there, it just come true. It was almost like it was obvious um, that, you know, because the other teams, they were they were good, and they were hitting 50% of their threes, too, that night. We're sitting there going, like, what is, what's going to happen that night? You go home, or do you rise up to another level of excellence? When you're shooting on them them rims in a postseason, and you have a new ball out, and you have the high, you know, the, the, the rims are tighter than your old high school gym, and now you're going to have to splash, or those guys that can't splash can't make shots no more. That's right. And so we're just constantly trying to focus on, you know, like, we talked about the push-ups for missing a layup. Well, right now, if you hit the back iron because it's the hardest part of the rim, then you got three push-ups. Wow. If you miss it because it hits the back iron. Because I, I don't want you shooting flat. And I keep telling, you know, good players, like, uh, flat shots, it's not it's that's small target. not hard it's to figure out. Target. I'm a rocket scientist. Yeah. It's going to go in with more arch. You look at Dirk and all those guys that shoot high percentages. Um, so we're just constantly on details. But then we want to keep the confidence there and the fearless nature to be able to shoot it. Um, so how do you create excellence and reward, you know, splashes without taking away confidence? Um, and, you know, I, I think I ask, I ask, if I was to ask you, what's a good shot, you know, and if you're one of my players and, uh, they know the answer now because I've told them a few times, but when you're going to make, yeah. <laughs> It's pretty simple. Well, you know, if you know you're gonna make it, then shoot yeah. it. Yeah. If you don't know you're gonna make it, don't shoot it. And now, if you're, you know, I just just do that. Like if over a period of time, you know, some guys got a bigger green light. They're shooting fifty percent from three. They're leading the country or whatever in three. They're gonna have a greener light. And you may need to understand. I gotta I gotta get hot or before I start taking tougher shots. And some guys can make tough shots and stuff. And that's just common sense. But. uh I think there's a, a way of – I talk about automatics. So um, I want them to play fearless and make aggressive mistakes. Weakness would be two things, soft and the double team or, or driving baseline and stepping out of bounds and not owning the sideline. Yeah. Um, uh, or doing a mistake twice, mm. an aggressive thing twice. So uh, if they go zone one possession, the first time they go zone, I ask my guys, hey, let's go inside out one time. So that just means, you know, get it inside or drive it inside before we just swing and jack one. Now, if you get one on the side and you know you're going to make it, shoot it. If you miss, you're coming out. But you'll go back in. 
but I'm not, I'm not, I would, I love that guy shoots and makes and I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, you were going to make it, didn't you? If he misses, he knows, but he's not scared to shoot it. He knows he's going to go back in. And there's just confidence, I think, that brings with automatics. Yeah. And, and so they know we rotate, we, we play a lot of guys and, you know, but they know they're confident. I'm going to put them back in. We're going to, we're going to have a, a quick conversation and maybe about the why or whatever at times, sometimes it's fatigue, but, uh, you know, they know a couple like if they're guarding the ball in bounds and, and they let it go underneath to the an easy layup. I'm like, we have one rule. Just your job is to make it go in the corner. <laughs> Don't let it go underneath. And that's automatic. You come out. Mm. Um, and I think that takes some of the pressure off of them wondering why they came out or or things like that. Um, one so thing, I think that goes once again. One, one, one thing that you said that uh, there's so much gold there. I mean, and, and we don't have enough hours to to break it all down. But one thing you said was training, uh, them training to shoot contested shots. And that's really interesting um, because I think majority of coaches out there would, would say that the goal of their offensive possession is to create a wide open shot, uh, you know, and, and different shot scales and all those things. But if you really think about when you're playing against poor competition and, you, and you're offensively, you're sound, yes, you will create some open shots. But the better competition that you're against, the better defensive teams you play against, open shots are rare. Now, and, and, and But here's what, here's what I think we could do is we can train our guys through the speed of their preparation, how, literally how long it takes for their feet to get down and leather to touch your fingertips for the shot to get up. We can increase their speed, but then also we can teach them how to – because. When 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 uh, people think con- like most contested shots really aren't so contested that that's why they missed like you know like they the hand was so high that they either blocked it or they made them change or adjust or speed up most of the time it's just because of the hand players not used to that because ninety nine percent of the shots that we shoot in practice are open wide open so I I. I mean, we, we have a shot scale, you know, uh, sevens are wide open jump shots within their range. Sixes are contested jump shots. But what I tell my guys is we want your sixes to bl- that line to blur so much mm-hmm. between six and seven because you shoot fast enough and you're used to hands being high. Because if you're playing against good defense or defensive teams, you're just not going to be wide open. So I think and, and honestly, yeah. it helps you shoot with arch. I mean, it's honestly yeah. a reminder. That's good. Uh, you know, it's like a high five. The guy, thank you. Line it up a little bit. Perfect. It's just in my, and you're talking in your mind constantly about confidence. I'm like, what's your word, man? Booyah. Like money. What, what is your word that, that you're saying right now inside your mind is breaming with confidence? Because if you don't say, if you don't have such confidence and joy that like, I, we got freedom to let it fly. We know we're going to offensive rebound that thing. But if we don't make that extra pass, then we're also, you know, that's a, that's an automatic. You, yeah. you should have made the extra one. You know, we saw it and you didn't. You need to start seeing better then because there was an extra pass there available and it would have been a better pass. I like that. I like the word idea. I'm, I, may, I'm, I may borrow that. Uh, I, 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 had a go- is- I had a coach tell me never use the word steal when you're talking about coaches because stealing is wrong. <laughs> but borrow. Bar- you can borrow things all day long. But I'll probably borrow that. And, you know, but the uh, when when – when coaches think about we want to shoot more uh, or they te- see teams that shoot a high volume of threes, like we're 30 to 40, you know, most games in a 32 minute, you know, high school game. And uh, a majority of those would probably by other standards be bad shots. But if we, if you train the way we train, if you think the way we think and your sixes can become sevens because of your preparation and then training like you're talking about that's how you get more volume up and they're not in our minds bad shots and there's we have a lot of shooting drills where they're made for somebody to close out on you uh as you say like it's funny i'll have one drill where my goal is for the guy to make a challenge shot just just a hand up shot right i mean just a normal and then the next drill is for the, you know, late couple couple drills later is for that defensive guy. You better not let him make this shot. Mm. And the guy's still trying to get a shot off and hit, but now the defense is doing everything but put a foot underneath his foot. Yeah. Trying to not foul him and make him miss. Cause 
you know, once again, defense field goal percentage, we have to be the best closeout team in the country. The, t- the two times we won national championships in the finals, we made it three times that far. In all three years, we were number one in defensive field goal percentage, 37, 37, 38. And so that was the highest correlation between the biggest amount of success. We've always been top five in those other areas as well. But that one, you know, you better steal the ball a lot if you're not holding their defensive field goal percentage down because when it comes down to you playing better teams, like you said, they're going to guard you. You're going to have to grind in the half court sometimes. Yeah. And you're going to have to belly guard them and stop their better players. Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast, share it with your fellow coaches, and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamoti Podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.